Over the years of DPing, I found that one of the ways to really improve my lighting and improve my work is to analyze a lot of the footage of shots that I like. So here we are today, uh, sitting here with Alan. This is Alan. I'm sure you've seen him on the channel plenty of times before, but what we are going after today is recreating the scene from Euphoria. So this scene is a shot of Elliot or Dominic Fike sitting on the bed hanging out with Rue, who is Zendaya. This is really just like a two second shot, but I really did love it. So we have actually teleported to Elliot's bedroom, which is actually fake. We're in an office, but it's the only place that we could find that had wood walls and Elliot's bedroom is sweet and has wooden walls. So we, what, what we did is this bed is not a bed, it's a massage bench and we put sheets over it and then I gaff taped up the curtains and threw some pillows, got a dog and found an Allen and uh, even a guitar. And we're gonna do our best to recreate this. So what we have here is the Sony FX3. You guys know I love that. I rigged it out for a nice little setup here. We're rocking the Nisi Athena lenses on it because you know I love them. And then we've got some mist filters on it. There's like a 1.8 on it. So obviously the, the lighting in here kind of sucks. It's all natural light. We've got all the overhead lighting. So I wanna start with dialing in first camera. I wanna frame up first because one of the important things is before you light is you wanna get your frame right. You wanna get your camera right. So that way you don't light it for one way and then have to move things and light it again. Okay, so now I've got this shot framed up with the 35mm lens on it. I thought a 35 would be right, but I'm starting to look at the frame kind of neck and neck with it next to the monitor. And just really what I'm seeing is more something along the lines of this being our shot. And I think they might need to move this light over a little bit as well. But something in this world is probably gonna be the framing that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna take this uh, 35 mil lens off. I'm gonna swap it out with the 50. So we'll just see what that looks like. So again, setting up camera first, lens, then your framing, composition, then we'll dial in the light from there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, bud, okay. Let's so I'd say we kind of have an idea for the framing here. Again, it's not gonna be perfect. Euphoria's got a little bit more budget than I do right now. So just such is life. But I'd say, yeah, it's, it's probably shot in a 50. Reframing is about where I want it to be. I might do a little tweaks along the way. What I want to do is kill the house lights and start to get a direction for where we're adding in some lights. But before we just go ahead and throw a light in, I really want to analyze the shot and figure out where the lights are kind of coming from and what's playing where. So there's a few different lights that are really playing a key role in here. I'd say three important lights. And the first is you can see Elliot, he's got this really almost hot light on him. What I like a lot about Euphoria and the cinematography is, it, is that sometimes things don't realistically have to make sense. Cause I, I would look at this lamp and I'd be like, there's no way it's throwing this light that far and that bright and that cool toned, but I like it. It looks really good. So that's one that I'm looking at as our, we'll call it our key light. And that is a relatively soft source. So I'll keep that in mind. You can see it's casting on his fingers on the guitar, but then the other light that we see in here is call it the edge light, this rim light, which is this warmer, almost like amber warm source. And it's coming from outdoors. So motivated off of like a sodium vapor outside light. So I know we'll need to put a light outside as well. And then the last one I see is this lamp here. This is just an in-frame practical. So we'll probably throw something in the lamp that we've got there just to dial in a really nice soft warm. So three different fixtures are kind of the key ones. And then we'll add in one by one and see how that looks. The first one I want to start with is that key light. So let's try to figure out how we would dial that in. So I'll cut the house lights off and we'll see what we can, what we can build up here. So the source that's spilling on Elliot's face, it's its not a hard quality light, but it's not the absolute uh, softest quality of light. So I can tell that that source isn't gonna be extremely huge. I would love to see the behind the scenes on it because I'd imagine it's somewhat like a, like a light mat or like a two by one panel or something like that. So what I'm gonna use is an Amaran F22C. It's soft, it's lightweight. It'll probably be about the size that I think is needed to get that quality of light. So really where I want this soft fixture to fall is like about right here, I think, kind of casting on Allen. Sometimes there's obstacles here. We could move the chair, but it's just a really tight area. So what I'm gonna do is just boom out an arm right here, just so I can get that, uh, that panel right here and see how that looks. Sorry. And for those who are curious, this is an Avenger arm and I'll put it in the link down below as well, but I use this thing all the time. And if you are gonna boom things out, make sure you're putting the load of this over a leg as well, so it's not gonna tip out from under you. Striking. My guess is, looking at this, let's take a look. We're far from there, folks. But we're getting in the right direction. So if I were to turn off the house lights, let's go ahead and dial in our exposure first. I've got it inside this link. So he's exposed, he's level, right? 
But if we look at the reference and we look at what's going on here, the wall is getting a lot of this light. It's sucking up a lot of this. My eyes aren't going straight to Alan. So what I wanna do is actually control that light source. And again, it's not exactly where we need it to be. Apologies if I'm super bright. I'm gonna put this egg crate on it, grid, honeycomb, many different names. Uh, and what this is gonna do is just give direction to our light source while keeping the quality of it. So it's gonna keep this light soft coming through the soft box of the Amaran, but it's keeping it from spilling on the wall. So now you can see that if I rip it off right here, the wall is sucking up all of this light. So right now, by adding this on, it is keeping our source going directly at Allen. And again, we're gonna shape it exactly to where we need it. My goal is to get it kind of on his face, but not as much on the wall here. So I'm just feathering that in. Honestly, I'm not too upset with where that is. I think the direction is pretty dialed in. You look at the cheekbones, falls off right below his eye. Fixtures at 3200, cameras at 3800. I'm gonna leave that there for right now. Honestly, I didn't think that that would work so easily. Two by two source that is gridded to control the soft light source. And already it's giving us a lot of the look that we need. Thumbnail. Just kidding, made you look. It's cold outside, so I don't want to go outside. But the second light I want to add is that edge light, which is this sodium vapor. Right now we can see Alan's head is just probably falling into darkness, falling into black. So that's what I want to work on next is actually adding a fixture outdoors that's shooting in the window, set to some sodium vapor look, just to give a little edge light. You can see it glow the curtains and a little bit of the window panes as well. We're following honestly kind of this three point lighting framework of we added in our key light, now we're adding in a rim light, and then maybe we'll add in a fill light or some other lights along the line. So you might be thinking this is an abnormally large stand for what we're doing, but there's only one reason for that. It's because that window that we're shooting through is all the way up there. So I've got myself a little Mambo combo stand, which goes up to 25 feet. That's gonna save the day for us. Dude, everything is so cold. So we're on a little bit of an incline right now. So one thing I wanna point out is uh, a lot of these big stands will have something called like a rocky leg or a sliding leg. And what that is, is this guy right here. Loosen it, level it, get it to where it needs to. So really one leg is just longer. So always put that on the downhill slope. This is the equivalent of when your mom says, bring all the groceries in in one run. What I'm working with here is the Aperture 600C. And there's two reasons why I'm using the 600C. First of all, is because it's color and I want this vapor look without having to actually gel it. So within Cytosync app, you've got all these gels and all of that and whatnot. But one of the main reasons why I'm using such a, a big light is just because it's raining and it's slushy outside. Otherwise I'd use the Amaran 300C. It's a lot lighter and easier to work with but this just has a little bit more weather resistance going on here. And then on top of it, modifier wise, I've got this Fresnel F10 because I just want to take this source and just push it in, have it very directional. Ideally, you have a whole G&E team for this, not just me. It's getting there. Okay, so we got this second light dialed in and honestly, I keep getting more and more impressed with how nice this is actually coming out. The edge light is, is casting exactly how we want it and it is at 600C outside. And a nice little update for you guys, it is at 1%. So you don't need that big of a source. Again, it's just because it's raining outside, I wanted something that's gonna be safe. But one thing I am noticing is the windows are casting a little bit more than in the film. And I, I think that's just because there might just be more on the windows, like more residue or whatever. And then the shears are thinner here. I kind of misjudged the curtains. So we're seeing a little bit more of the light cast through. That's just kind of the nature of where we're at. But so far with just the key and the edge light, it has come together a lot more than I thought it would. I wanna break down a couple of the things that I'm seeing that are still sticking out to me. One, the camera angle is a little bit different actually. I'm starting to notice that now that they're a little bit higher in tilting down in this scene. So I'm just gonna do a slight change right now. I wanna swap out, cause there's, there's the source over here, our practical light that's over in the corner of the frame. That's still an incandescent, that's just a house light. So what I wanna do is actually swap this bulb out for an aperture B7C. So now we can really control this. The freaking hot ones. Son of a... Yeah, that's that's toasty. You know what? I got I got something that'll help. It's an old trick. You hold on to a cold beer just for a couple seconds, take a couple tugs. Your hands cold again, you can move the hot light. Look at that. Not even flinching. Oh shit. Hold on. Then you just re-up. Oh Jimmy. There you go. And there's uh, onset tips with Brady. Don't actually use that onset, you'll get fired. So 
Yes, I just wanted to get rid of this guy just to be able to control the light source a little bit more. We've got the bulb swapped out. And again, being on side, I think we've got full control over it. So I've got this set to 2700 Kelvin because it was kind of warm. I wanted that warm look to it. And now it's starting to get where I want it to, quite honestly, and I want to compare it. I'm starting to see some differences here, but I just don't know what. I think the light is just a little bit too wrappy, so I think I'm just gonna move the source. This is what I do. I'll kind of get it to a position where I'm content with it and we're starting to see the shape of it, and then I'm gonna polish it off and kind of retrace my steps. That's where he's looking there, so I'm just gonna bring this in a little bit more, shape it right here, and again, I'm feathering this. I don't want it to be on the curtain, really. I kind of want this to be brushing, like this, this exposure line brushing his head. So like walking it back, I'll find where it's hitting the curtain and then I'll start to bring it in there. And then really it's just allowing this light to not spill throughout the scene. I'm pretty happy with it. I think since I moved it closer, we do need to dial down the exposure. He's got a cigarette or a joint in the shot. This is an index card. Hey, you need something. Thank you, sir. In the reference, something is coming from over here and casting a little bit of level because right now it's, it's dark in this area. And I'm assuming they just wanted to have a little bit more level going on here. So I want something that's brushing this curtain ever so slightly. What I've got here is just an Amaran T4C tube. And my anticipation is that I'm just gonna stick this vertically right over there and put some sort of grid on it. So it's just shining very controlled in a very narrow pattern. So. It looks like in the reference that this kind of curtain light that's coming from Mystery Land is just matching up with whatever that vapor light is outside. So unfortunately the Amaran lights don't have as many gels, I don't think, as the Aperture lights do. But what it does have is into the color section, I can go into Picker, I can do this, go up to the window, and just pick that, and I think it matches it up pretty darn good. So let me be honest with you guys. This came out worlds better than I thought it was going to. I'm really proud of it. I think this was a really fun scene to recreate. It was an interesting scene because it's very low impact in the story of Euphoria. But I really did love the look of it. I loved just the, the control of the light sources. It was a really great challenge. The biggest thing that I've found to really improve my technique or strategy or whatever is to analyze footage of shots that I like and just trying to achieve that and trying to you know reference it and say oh well this looks like that how do i shape my light to look like that or how do i do my camera movement to look like that and that's something that from the beginning has been really crucial for me so that's where i'm going to leave this today i'm really proud of it i'm really happy with it i hope that you enjoyed coming along with it if you have any ideas of something that you would like me to recreate please leave a comment down below in the bottom because i am starting to really like this i think it's a really great learning curve and a great challenge as well for me so leave a comment if you have anything that i should do that you would like i was thinking i don't know maybe the bathtub scene in saltburn anyway bye